Are you a real estate investor that's tired of only being sent opportunities? I'm gonna show you how to find exactly what you want in your own backyard. Let's dive right in. If you're looking for flips, if you're a wholesaler, if you're a buy and hold guy, you know exactly what I'm talking about in the beginning of this intro. Wholesalers are sending you deals that are in the worst parts of town that are worth maybe a hundred grand that need 400 K in work, or realtors are sending you properties that you can get for 200 that are worth 215 that need 25 grand in work, right? You know what I'm talking about. They're these thin, slim deal opportunities, or they're in the neighborhoods we don't like or places that just need too much work. And it gets kind of frustrating. Like you're digging through emails, you're digging through opportunities. You might even make the mistake of starting to sell yourself on like, maybe I should do this one. Yeah, it doesn't meet the 75% rule, but like if the stars align, I might make $14. We've all been there. I'm going to walk you through step by step how we just got this beautiful house built after the 2000s off market direct to seller at a stupid discount. Now, if you're a wholesaler, if you're doing your own direct to seller marketing, you're probably hitting like the niche list, right? People tell you go after things that are in foreclosure or that are vacant or that are boarded up, right? Drive for dollars. Well, the problem with that, you end up with places that might not really be what you want. It's kind of hard to go drive for dollars and get something this nice because it wouldn't have ever ended up on one of my driving for dollars lists. So I'm going to walk you through the list we pulled, the piece we sent, how we ran our numbers, all the ins and outs on this deal. I'm even going to show you inside of my CRM, the website the seller went to, all that good stuff. All that I'm going to ask in return is if you get value out of this content, simply like the video that gets us in front of more people just like you. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe. That way uh, we keep putting these out. So to start just quick 10,000 foot overview of what we did here, we took data from prop stream. We sent ballpoint marketing pieces of mail, our investor care at websites printed on the bottom of every piece of mail that we send. The phone number that's on those pieces goes to call Porter. It's my company in the US. Literally all we do is take calls for real estate investors. They've taken every residential call I've had come in since like 2017 at this point, take around 10,000 calls a month for investors just like you and just like myself. And then we worked the entire opportunity inside of the CRM we use Resimply. So I'm going to walk you through how to pull the list, the actual lead in my CRM, how many phone calls, texts it took, all that good stuff. So let's dive into this now. So here is this exact deal in the CRM. I'm going to start by walking you through like what list it was on, how we ran our numbers, and then I'll walk you through pulling that list, ordering the mail. So you can literally just copy and paste what we're doing. So this seller actually called in, in September of 2022, we ran an appointment on the 27th, made our offer the following day on the 28th. We didn't get it under contract until October. And then this one actually didn't close until January of this year. So what is that? September, October, November, December, January, like five months from the time they called in till when we bought the house. You can see right here in Resimply that they were sent one of the ballpoint marketing um, comic postcards. I'll show you what those look like here in a second. Um, as well as how to pull the list that this was on. One of the features that I actually really like with Resimply is you can pin any of like the communication or notes back and forth with your seller directly in the CRM, which makes those really easy to find. Um, we always end up pinning how we actually analyzed the deal, the way it's super easy for us to go back and see like, were we correct or did we drop the ball, right? So on this particular deal, we thought that it was going to be worth 420,000. We did use the 75% rule. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'll link to that video above on how to pull that, but effectively 420,000, 75% of that knocks us down to 315 K then subtract out the cost of any repairs that we're going to do. And that leaves us with our MAO or max allowable offer. In this instance, that was 300K. We ended up buying the place for 300K. Realistically on a house this nice, there really wasn't all that much for us to do. 
you could see in the notes here, Noah talked about maybe updating some granite in the kitchen, um, doing some other kind of miscellaneous knickknacks, but nothing too crazy. We bought it for 300. We always look at like as is comps, meaning if I didn't do anything, just bought the place, turned around and listed it on the MLS, what could I get for it? In this instance, we thought we could get like 380. So by putting 15K into it, should ideally be able to bump that to 420. The ROI on that makes sense, especially kind of this small of a rehab. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would somebody have this nice of a house that they could turn around, do nothing to, list it for 385 and get that? Why would they sell it for 300? Were they in distress? Was this a foreclosure? Was it a divorce? Was there, you know, some like motivating factor that just forced them to sell? Absolutely not. They were building a newer, nicer house and wanted flexibility. They knew they needed at least 300 grand and they wanted the ability to maybe close later or rent back if they needed to or something. We went under contract on this in October. We didn't close until January and we didn't even get like possession of the house to start the work on it until early February. So why did they sell for $85,000, $100,000 less than they could have? Convenience. It's that simple. A lot of folks that have platforms like mine don't talk about this, but the like distressed stuff, the motivated sellers, in my experience, are my least favorite deals. It's not that I don't want to help somebody out that's in foreclosure or that inherited something or that there's like a, you know, messy situation with. But these are my bread and butter. It's somebody who's affluent. They want to trade equity for an easy transaction. Like no drama in and out left us a five star review online. Can't complain about that. I've done other deals like some hoarder houses that they're still calling us six, seven months, a year after the fact being like, well, I don't like that you painted it that color. Like we've already sold that house and moved on. We just we don't get that kind of drama on this newer, nicer stuff typically. So I'm going to show you the exact list that I pulled just straight in PropStream. Uh, PropStream is like a hundred bucks a month. They've got a seven day free trial. We've got an affiliate link that we'll throw in the comments below. If you wanna support the channel and use it, cool. Uh, if you don't wanna support us, totally cool. Just don't tell them we sent you. It's that straightforward. So I'm gonna walk you guys through the actual list that we pulled here. So here we are actually in prop stream. If you've watched any of my videos, you've seen this before. Um, a lot of people ask like why I name drop these tools. It's because I'm actively utilizing them to generate a profit in my business. That in this video wouldn't be super helpful to you if I was like, look at how much money I made. I'm not going to tell you how to do any of it. Right. Like, you know, at that point, I might as well just I don't know post more on Instagram or something. So right here at the top, you're simply going to throw in the city that you're looking in. This particular deal was in Indianapolis, Indiana. So we'll throw that in there. The next thing you're going to do is click this filter box. Um, now I don't expect you to like do this as I do it. This is more of like a follow along pause it if you need to, to pull this list in your own market. So we're going to hop in here into valuation and equity to start. I always do a 35 to 100% equity range. In my experience, because we're trying to buy places at 75% minus repairs, that 35% that equity is kind of like the minimum we're looking for where somebody can just afford to sell to us. And that's kind of often what most happens. Next thing we're gonna do here is hop into property characteristics and we're gonna click single family. Now, depending on what you're looking for, right? Like at the beginning of this video, I said, I'm going to show you how to find exactly what you want. What you want might be a little bit different than what I'm showing you in this video, but it's what I want. So I'm going to show you how to find it. Just make the tweaks to make it look like what you want. So if you're looking for say multifamily or condos or whatever, you'd include those in this instance, I'm just looking for houses. So we have houses that have a 35 to 100% equity range is kind of where we're at. In the property characteristics, I'm now going to walk you through my like vinyl village list. Now, what's a vinyl village? It's kind of those like Stepfordy suburbia, like vinyl houses that are kind of copy and pasted and all look the same, right? 
It's like the American dream type neighborhood. So what I do to find these, I do a minimum bedroom count of three. I do a minimum bathroom count of two. I do a minimum square footage rating of a thousand square feet that cuts out those like real small houses that are, um, tend to be a little bit older and then year built. This is where you kind of pick like what's typical in your market. They started building these in Indianapolis from what I've seen in the like late eighties, early nineties, more popular in like the two thousands. So I typically do 1989 is the oldest and look for stuff newer than that. You could also get into things like, you know, lot size, um, how many stories it is, if it includes an HOA or not. I don't really get that specific. Um, you can do it. It includes a garage. So what I'm looking for three bedrooms, two baths, minimum, ideally like a four, three is really cool with an attached two car garage in a good neighborhood, right? So we can see with that criteria here, there's 28,000 records that match this particular list. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's going to be cheap for you to hit 28,000 people. But if we go back to this deal, I bought it for 300. I can do nothing to it and sell it for 385. It's a lot of money because this is the kind of house everybody wants. Family wants it. The hedge funds want it. Other landlords want it. People want to Airbnb it, right? It's not hard at all to sell a house like this if you get a good deal on it. So on this particular one, you literally check the box, click add to list, create a new list, hop over here into my properties, pick the list and export it out. It's that straightforward. Now, one thing that you very likely want to add into your search criteria on a list like this is how expensive the houses are or aren't. If I just pulled this list as is, I'm mailing like million, two million dollar type places, which as an investor is really not what I'm looking for. So you're going to want to go back into that valuation and equity. And what I typically do with these, I do a max of 300,000. That kind of puts us right in like the first to second time home buyer price point in our market. I believe PropStream pulls that based off of the assessed value. The assessed value in our market tends to be like 20 to 30% below what the place is actually worth. Hence why we got a $400,000 house off of a list of properties that were valued at 300 K or below. But you can see that also makes this a much more manageable um, size property. Now, one thing to note, some of these are absentee. Some of them are owner occupied. Some of them are seniors. Some of them are going to be owned by companies or trusts, right? So there are kind of some of those ways that you can whittle it down if you want. My rule of thumb with these though, if any of these people decide that they want to sell, I want to get in front of them that month. So this is one of those lists. I'm going to show you the mail pieces we use. We throw on a sequence that just fires every single month without us doing anything to it. Now it is a little bit more expensive to go and mail 13,000 people a month. Uh, you don't have to be a genius at math to figure that out. But if you're getting deals like this out of it, it's way, 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 way worth it, right? Like I said, this one on the MLS would have gone for 385K. Your realtor is not bringing you this deal for 300K. Your wholesaler is not bringing you this deal for 300K. The only way to get stuff like this is to get clear on what you want and go after it. So for this particular deal, we ended up doing the comic card sequence. We have two different kind of postcard sequences at ballpoint. We've got the Americana ones. That's the newer kind of like more retro -y themed, like vintage Americana type stuff. And then the original one we had is the comic card sequence. So this is what this particular one was on. Um, the thought process with these, it's kind of that like brighter, like click pop, you know, type um, design. It's not like anything else that anybody is really getting in the mail or sending at this point. So on this one, you'd choose the comic card sequence. You'd pick the handwriting style. Uh, do you go cursive? Do you go non-cursive? Look, every single one of these that I send is cursive. I don't use the non-cursive. I don't recommend it. The only reason we even offer it is we had people that were like, I can't read it. My sellers can't read it. 
So, you know, if that's you, uh, you can do non-cursive. It's more expensive and we haven't seen a better return on investment from it. So I don't recommend it. So you're going to pick the font you want and then the amount of people you're mailing. So in this instance, uh, it was right at like, you know, 13,000 and some change, 13,734. So you'd go throw that in here. Now, the cool thing with the comic card sequence is this goes out every single month for you like clockwork. It's really simple. The staff at Ballpoint will share a Google Sheet with you. And all you do with that is remove the people that respond or the people that ask to be taken off the list or the mail that comes back to you return to sender. That way you're not remailing people who've asked you to stop. Right. But really straightforward there. You click subscribe and save. The cool thing with the postcard sequences is you actually get 20% off on those. So we can see the cart on these uh, to hit those 13,000 people. You're looking right at like 10K a month. I know what you're thinking. Like, oh my gosh, that's expensive. 100% is. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's not. When I first started out, coming out the gate with a campaign like this isn't something that I could have done. But if we look at the return on this, just on the first time we hit this, we got that one deal. We've had multiple other deals come out of this. But that one deal, realistically, like we're going to end up netting more than this entire campaign will cost. Anything new that comes out of it, just gravy. Now, I'd be remiss without plugging Call Porter again. They take all the calls that come off of this. So if you're like me and you're thinking, wait a minute, if I mail 13,000 people, that's a lot of phone calls that are going to come in, right? I don't take any of those calls. I haven't personally had to take an inbound seller call since 2017. So they handle that for us. Um, if you're interested in having them take your calls for you, if you've got a day job or something, it's way, way cheaper than hiring a VA or somebody in the U.S. to do it for you use our folks in the US, the benefit you get is you're splitting that cost between other investors, right? So you're probably not going to need a full-time employee. You just need somebody there for when the phone does ring. Call Porter is great for that niche. Literally any deal you've seen me talk about, they've taken the call for. So I can't give you a better review than that. If you're interested in hiring them, just hit the schedule a demo button, fill out a quick form. They'll reach out and kind of go over options and stuff with you. Last but not least, this is the investor carrot site that the seller lands on. So they get the piece of mail. What we find is over half of our leads go find our website and then fill out this form before calling us. So the seller went, read reviews, made sure we were legit, filled out the form. Um, this is my carrot site. I've talked about them pretty extensively. Mine doesn't look like other carrot sites because carrot has like a concierge option. I think it's a couple grand, like 3000 bucks, and they'll make you your totally own custom site. So if your argument is like, oh, everybody uses carrot sites, they all look the same. I mean, if you're not cheap, <laughs> you can make yours not look like everybody else's. So now we're gonna cut to my business partner, Noah, in Indianapolis to walk you through our plans with this deal. What's up guys? I'm in front of a house we just purchased. Isn't it beautiful? It's a real good looking house. Let's go get the inside tour. Let's go take a look. What's up guys? We are in our latest house we got. It is a mammoth of a house. It's about 4,000 square feet, left in great shape. We have got a formal dining room and then we've got like a sitting room right off the front of the house. It's got all this really nice pergo laminate floor in really great shape. And then from here, it opens up into massive living room. And then in here, there was a huge entertainment uh, center wall on that wall. Super, super open concept, which is great. You can, from the front door, when you walk in, you can see the living room all the way out into the kitchen. Here's another dining space, eat-in kitchen, if you will. Um, from here, we've got eating kitchen and then we've got I guess you'd call it a den they kind of had it as like a little workout room type thing uh, they even have a sauna back here which is really nice and then off this little den area you could make it an office we've got the garage and stuff back there another half bath which is super nice to have as soon as you come in back to the kitchen very big nice open kitchen custom cabinetry that's the dishwasher custom cabinets all the way around um, Kind of a bland countertop, which we're actually going to replace. It's going to be more of this nice style granite. Uh, just a nice, open, spacious kitchen. We've got a huge walk-in pantry. 
which is perfect for, you can only assume there's gonna be a large family that lives in this house with as big as it is. A lot of pantry space, all kinds of room for food, gathering, entertainment. Just this whole layout is set up great for entertaining, whether it's uh, older couple and they entertain a lot, a big family, a ton of friends over, whole nine yards. There's a lot of options with this house because it's so big. But yeah, that's the main floor of the house. Let's, uh, let's take a peek upstairs. We are upstairs in the loft now. As you can see, they left a lot of stuff. We're gonna pull all of this downstairs. We're actually gonna do a community garage sale. See how much of it we can sell, see how much we can get rid of on Facebook Marketplace. All right, let's chat about some of these rooms. So upstairs we have a massive loft. We've got the master, we've got this bedroom I'm in, another bedroom, and another bedroom. So we've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, four bedrooms and a big loft up here. Same thing we talked about, we're gonna replace all this carpet. It's, it's a little stained, it's worn, it's nothing terrible, but it just needs to be freshened up for the new owner. Um, all these rooms are situated uh, in very much a circle. So we've got closet, and then from here, the hallway is out that door. Once we get through the Jack and Jill, then we've got another bedroom. Replace all the carpet in here. We've got a bunch of rugs and stuff. Another bedroom, huge closet, nothing too crazy. And then we get back out into the hallway. So from here, we've got hallway all the way into the loft, another full bath, the bedroom we just came from, now we're into the fourth bedroom. Same thing in here, rip up all the carpet, get rid of it, put fresh new carpet in here, and then we will go into the master through the back secret way. Okay, so like I said, the whole upstairs is actually a giant circle. So we're coming through the closet. So that's closet of bedroom four. Now we're in the closet of the primary, master, whatever you want to call it and into the bathroom of the master. Nice big bedroom. A lot of stuff, needs new carpet. Nothing too crazy. It's a huge space, a lot of room for activities, if you will. Uh, but yeah, great room and nothing too beat up. So that concludes the house tour. So we can uh, take a peek downstairs again and see what we have going on. So let's break down some of the numbers for this house. So we purchased it for 300,000 on the nose. We're gonna put about 15 to 16,000 into it. So after lender costs and stuff like that, we're gonna be into it for 320, 325-ish. And the list price on this thing is gonna be 420. Hopefully you guys like these kind of like deep dive videos. My goal with these is that you go copy this stuff to get results and make more money. My goal with being on YouTube isn't like, oh, you just join our mastermind group CCF because that's not for everybody. Like CCF is only for established investors that are looking to scale their business. Established meaning like you've done a couple deals. We give away more than enough info for free right here to make you six figures a year. If you don't apply it, you're not going to get anything out of it. But I promise you the folks that do are very, very happy that they've hung out with us. Thank you guys for taking the time to hang out with us. Again, my name was Ryan Dossie. If you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, otherwise, you know, that explains why your parents are disappointed in you. Have a nice day.